Hi everyone, my name is Andrews, and <laughs> god, this channel still exists, I haven't updated it like some, somewhere in the year. But, tell it, I have some thoughts about gaming in my mind, and I'm gonna use this channel as an outlet for those thoughts. Um, in the background you can see me modeling in 3D Max a hockey goalie helmet, because hockey championship is, is happening right now. And I am a big fan of our home team, Latvian national team in hockey. So yeah, you're gonna watch me model a hockey helmet. I'll continue to watch it. I think it's better than stare at my face. Uh, today I want to talk about to you uh, about player choice in games. It's a thing that kind of is the next step in interactivity. Like, not only allowing the player to like shoot, kill, or interact with objects, but actually influence how the story will progress and where they, and where the game will take them. Kind of make it a more personal experience, which is great on paper, but starts to fall apart when you, when you try to apply that in real life. Because just, like, basic math tells us that this is hard to do. Think about this. If you have a choice to make a game, you can do, you can choose choice A or choice B. That's two choices. Now, you already have two separate path branches in the story. Now, let's say that every now at some point both of those branches also have, will have a choice. So now you have four branches. Then another choice is added. Eight branches. Another sixteen. So as you go more and more deeper into the game, and more and more choices are presented to you, the number of possibilities a developer has to generate increases in a dramatic rate. That's why you often see choices that either are an illusion of a choice or are set up in a such a way that no matter what you choose you will still visit a location or go do a specific thing because it's not really possible to develop a game that will make a unique experience, fully unique experience on all of those choices because even if you have six choices it's already 128 variations on those different events. So you kind of have to make some compromises during that. And I think a great example of that is actually the Mass Effect series, because Mass Effect achieves a great thing, but it also is a trap on its own thing. Because there's that promise that well, you you make choices, and one choice will carry to the next game, or well, several choices will carry into the next game, and you, uh, you, your shepherd kind of will become personal to you. It's kind of your version of that shepherd will be, um, but kind of because it's a it's a story about saving the galaxy from this menace and kind of saving everyone. You kind of expect that it will end in a way that you'll save it. So no matter what choices you make, you kind of expect that you will be able to save the galaxy in the end. Now. Spoilers if you haven't played Mass Effect 3, but the way that game ends, the, de the developers kind of try to get away from that notion and say, Haha, no, you were wrong. But the way they handle it just was kind of half assed. And, and I, I don't think there's any good way to handle th those kind of situations. You have to be perfect in your execution, and even if there's the slightest fault in that, the internet will gonna tear you apart, which happened with Mass Effect 3. So, y you kind of... So you kind of understand that this is hard to do. Player choice is really hard to do, especially during the span of three games. Now, you can go then the route of The Witcher 2, which actually tries to say... and which actually tries to give you meaningful player choice, because I know if you know that, but in Witcher 2, the whole second act can be completely different. Like, you make a decision at the end of the first act, which will influence not only the characters you will meet, but the location of the game itself. Extensively, 
you're just will not see a whole third of the game because you make a choice that eliminates that possibility which I think is awesome I think that's great it's something that I didn't even realize after finishing the game and just gathering information about it online then said holy hell I think that's great but again The Witcher 2 kind of falls a bit of prey on its scope because again, it's also a game about nations and people and politics and saving the world and such, so I think it shares the problem with the Mass Effect series is that because of the scope of the choices, it's hard to feel that they're personal. Because you're basically you in your hands lies the fate of many, many people who you're never gonna meet. Sure, it also entails that you're gonna save people you actually care of, but the greater motivation is to save people who you don't know. Which, I don't know, for me, it's kind of, I think that's where the story kind of starts to fall a bit in those spots, because how you make something personal and meaningful, you have, you're dealing with a thing that's, well, it's kind of just exists and you have to take for granted that it is there and there's nothing really you can do about it. Now this where we come to a game that I played recently which I think which I think handles player choice very well. And because and just because it doesn't has the has that grand scope and I'm talking about the walking dead. Now it's made by Telltale uh it's similar to Jurassic Park, but it's not crappy. And the way the player choice is handled there is great. Because they don't tell you a lot about zombie apocalypse or how what. And because you just, your hero, your character just found himself in the situation where the dead are rising up and becoming zombies, it's about saving your own skin. It's about survival. It's not about saving the world. It's not about saving a mass population of people, be it a, a city or a country. No, it's about saving yourself and meeting new people and trying to make alliances, think who you can trust, who you cannot trust. And there's no this notion that you're gonna eventually save the world. You don't know how this will gonna end because you don't see an end to it. Sure, there's this hope that zombies will disappear at one day, but you don't know how or will it happen, so you live on day by day basis. And I think that's what makes choices in that game very powerful. Because the choices you make well they they're very meaningful because you're dependent on other people as well as they dependent on you because you understand because everyone understands there's no way they're gonna survive this on their own so they need to collaborate and trust everyone but who to trust and how much trust to give and what to do well that's up to the player and the game that gives you little hints about practically no hints about what's gonna happen next next you just you just have to sit there I think that's a very great way how to handle player choice because not knowing just not knowing anything about the choice and just kind of making these gut feel re choices about well who well well will I trust this guy or th this girl or what I'm gonna do and I also like that at the end of the game they kind of show you the statistics like there are several kind of big decision plot decisions in the game and then of the episode they show you this many people chose the same the same decision you did like percentage level which I thought is really cool so yeah I think and another thing that helps that game similar how in the Witcher series handles it is that there's no real good or bad choice there are shades of grey so like you there's all this always constant notion of being threatened and you 
kind of have to just say to yourself, well, how, how can I choose th this over that? Well, what are the pros and cons? Uh, I think that's great. Like, I like seeing how people, like, going on the message forums and watching how, well, wh what choice people have made and their motivation behind that. I think it's great. Like, it's a, it's a, it's very well executed because, like again, while I love Mass Effect and especially I love Mass Effect One, I I love those games. They're fantastic, one of the best of this generation, I think. Choices in those games are often black and white. Either you go full Paragon or Renegade, and there's was there practically never was a motivation to go in the middle. Especially in Mass Effect 2 and 3, where the persuasion and intimidation skills were taken out, and basically, that was now those choices were determined by your Paragon and Renegade ratings. So, you kind of had to choose, well, one way or the other and sub and commit. The Walking Dead and the Witcher series kind of don't do that. There's no meters, actually. There's just a choice. It's not good or bad, it's just a choice you have to make. And yeah, so I'm excited about episode 2, and I cannot like, especially I'm excited about episode 4 because it's written by Gary Witte, who's... I don't follow some of the stuff that dude does, and that makes me fun. But yeah, f yeah, player choices. H hard to do. Who knew? So... Yeah, th th that's my little tidbit of thought about player choices. Uh, I hope more developers in try to execute that. And it's hard and it takes time, but studios like uh, Red CD Project and Telltale guys kind of proved that you don't have to be this big massive studio like Bioware to actually make a game where player choices can do something and be meaningful. Mm, it, but again it's hard. It's really hard because you, at some point you have to create an illusion of a choice without actually well basically there has to be an illusion of a choice most of the times. Even if that tell, even if at the end, the outcome will be somewhat similar to the other path you might have gone. At least the player has to feel that the way they handled that situation kind of significantly impacted the story and the universe. So yeah, I think that's about it on this topic. Um, again, I recommend you play Walking Dead. It's awesome. It takes like three to four hours to complete. But damn, is it good! So um, if you have any comments on the topic, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And have a nice day. Bye.